Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Navstar. Today we are reviewing the Durafly ME163B version 2 from Hobby King. This is a World War II interceptor fighter fitted with a rocket motor and droppable undercarriage. The Messerschmitt 163 Comet was a revolutionary marvel of World War II aviation. This was the world's first operational rocket-powered fighter. It entered service in 1944 to defend the skies against the Allied bombers. Powered by a volatile Walker 509 engine, it was fueled by a dangerous mix of hydrogen peroxide and hydrazine, and that aircraft could reach 30,000 feet in under three minutes and speeds of over 700 miles an hour, faster than any piston engine aircraft of its time. But it was too little too late. Uh, despite the performance of this aircraft, it actually flew too fast to get accurate sighting on the bombers and was extremely vulnerable to its return flight in the glide mode to allied aircraft that were taking them out of the skies on a regular basis. So despite its amazing uh, abilities uh, to get to altitude and uh, to perform at such high speeds, the uh, corn-fed boys from Nebraska flying the B-17s uh, were in charge of the skies and they did their number on the Germans and drew the war to a speedy end. So although it didn't do much in the uh, end of the war, in the final analysis, it was a revolutionary aircraft that did provide a lot of basis for future design. All right, let's get into the Maiden. So being like a Delta Wing, uh, she is a unique aircraft to fly around. First of all, she needs a lot of speed to take off. Uh, I noticed that uh, she really needs to be moving along at about three-quarter throttle in order to get enough wind under the wings. And But, you know, once you kept her straight and narrow, she, she takes off pretty easily. Here's a, here's a shot I took uh, of the undercarriage. I wanted to see how she would behave with that. She didn't really like having cameras on the wings, although I'm going to do some more videos later. And here's a shot of her dropping the undercarriage. Uh, she is fitted with a... A magnetic switch which is wired into the flight controller so at the touch of a button one could very easily drop the undercarriage or fly with it if you want. Uh, the default mode for the aircraft is that the uh, undercarriage falls away uh, by gravity uh, once you leave the ground but if you go a little bit farther and install the magnetic switch it, it makes for a more enjoyable uh, flight because you can drop it wherever you want. I usually did one flyby and then dropped it where I knew I could find it. Uh, they are red, so you can find it in the field if, if, you, uh, if you drop it, but I definitely like to use the magnetic switch. Very fast aircraft, but once it's dialed in and the mixes are right, boy, it's great. Um, I would not be flying this plane uh, early in my uh, RC career, uh, something you want to work up to. Uh, because the flight dynamics are a little bit uh, challenging but like I said once you get it dialed in you get the CG right and the mix is on she does very very well so here's a shot of getting the uh, rocket assisted motor uh, fired off um, we'll get into some detail with that later and there's some other videos online on how to do it but basically it's just a rocket motor from Estes with an igniter that's wired into the flight controller and also has a switch on a momentary setting uh, to ignite the uh, rocket igniter uh, in order to get it to work. Um, you've got to really make sure you do that right. You don't want that thing to be fired off on the flight line. Uh, I was able to wire up a, uh, a safety switch for it just to make sure it was done right, but here it goes. Pretty good boost to speed. Um, my first rocket motor uh, attempt didn't really burn that long, but I've got a couple of other uh, shots with it where it did do better. 
Um, I'm not sure if that was a fault of the motor or not, but nonetheless, really exciting. Um, I've seen a few shots of uh, some YouTube videos where guys were taking off with it as it is designed, but to be honest, I think that's too much thrust for the takeoff. She does just fine with the propeller, and one should save the rocket assist for a flyby. Landing was a piece of cake. Um, I really didn't see any issues with it. I mean, she's a very maneuverable aircraft, and you know, it's coming pretty hot, but she but she lands just fine. So all in all, um, this is a really special little aircraft. I love it. Uh, if you have some experience, go ahead and jump on it. Um, definitely want to make sure the CG is right. Uh, she was spot on, and, and but she's extremely sensitive to uh, CG being off, so you want to make sure you get that right. You also want to make sure you practice uh, some real discipline with your wiring if you're going to go through and put the rocket assist motor on there. Again, safety first. Four out of five, I did have a faulty servo on there, which a quick replacement fixed. Um, they are plastic gear servos, so um, a little disappointed in that, but uh, nonetheless, that's that's part of the game. So did have to replace one there. Five out of five. I thought she flew great. The thing really hauls the mail. It's fast, it's loud, and it's fun. What's not to like about that? Uh, especially the with the scale detail. It's it's really unique to have on the flight line. And as far as the uh, the newbies are concerned, you might want to hang off on on getting into this. It's definitely not a first, second, or third plane, build up your experience before you get into it. You really need a good knowledge of uh, mixes and making sure you understand how a flying wing operates with a rudder. So I want to thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, thank you Hobby King for providing this and uh, stay tuned. We're going to get into the build next. All right. Let's get into the unboxing. Uh, the Durafly products have all generally come well packaged and in this case it was no exception. Uh, each of the wings were individually wrapped. Uh, there was no damage whatsoever on the product and uh, I found them to be um, really well painted and the, uh, the decals were applied uh, in a good fashion and were in generally really good shape. Uh, not a single little nick or problem with that. So uh, they're home, they're, excuse me, foam uh, hinges. Um, I always like to add a little bit of uh, glue to those to reinforce them, but, but they're well made. And, uh, you know, in the uh, number of days that I was flying it, the, uh, the foam hinges held up really well. I love that everything is pre-wired and ready to go. It's a very, very simple build. Um, I don't think you really need a lot of skill to put it together. However, the uh, directions are paramount to follow correctly. Inside the, uh, the box we have a, uh, another individually wrapped bag with the uh, vertical stabilizer, another uh, pinch foam hinge, uh, not really a big issue on an aircraft like this. Um, servos were led properly and uh, didn't seem to be a problem at all with those. Here's the undercarriage. Uh, you'll note that it's uh, high visibility red, so you can find it in the field. And uh, see the little indent in the top is for the insertion of a magnet that one will use with the, uh, with the releasing servo. And that's sold separately. Here's the uh, carbon fiber spar, which was uh, supplied in the box. Seemed pretty, pretty durable. Um, and in here, what do we got? Goodie bag spinners, props, thank you very much, some scale details, some antennas, and the uh, servo arms for the uh, aileron and rudder. And finally, the fuselage. Really like the scale detail on this one. I'm very fond of this uh, little plane. Um, obviously the the real one doesn't have a propeller on the front of it but uh, 
it is all assembled and ready to go basically uh, you can see it has a, a tailwheel on it which i think is different on this version it may not have had one on the previous model uh, nice scale detail uh, with the pilot inside and uh, the cockpit details as well ample room inside for a uh, 4s battery and uh, the servo the uh, 40 amp esc as well it was um, just enough room, actually, for all my electronics, to be honest. And there on the stern uh, is the port for the uh, rocket motor, which one can insert there if they wire it up properly with the correct switch from Hobby King. There you go. There's the fuselage. Got some stickers, which you're going to need to cover up the seams. And, of course... The quick assembly guide i would use that but i would definitely stick to the full uh, assembly manual which is provided online uh, underneath the model on the website well, as always um, if you're used to seeing my videos i always check my servos and center them with my servo checker uh, it's very very important to to do so it'll save you a lot of hassle later on you also want to check to make sure your servos sound good and don't have any uh, sound like gravel or issues with the uh, with the gears. Those will be immediately apparent to you um, in this pre-testing process. Next, uh, just securing the servo arms and adjusting them appropriately. Obviously, you brought your um, servos to midpoint first. Installation of the remaining servo arms and control surface equipment was easy and uh, pretty straightforward, basic stuff. You don't need a lot of skill for that. Next, the installation of the main spar, uh, which you just install centered on the fuselage. Uh, before you do so, you need to feed the um, servo wires through the fuselage. I had to open up those holes a little bit in order to get it through. Uh, it wasn't a big deal. Just use the uh, main spar for that, widen it up. And then once everything is uh, centered, you go ahead and get those through. And, and I found it really interesting that we had to glue the wings on at that point. Um, I would definitely dry fit everything together and get that working properly uh, before you actually put your first piece of a uh, bit of glue on there. This is what the tape's for, uh, just to cover up the seams. I don't know if it's really necessary. Um, I think if you do a good job gluing it, you don't need it. I, they have a, The tape does have a tendency to come off, uh, which would damage the paint. So. I uh, you know take it or leave it you know if I if I had to do this over I probably wouldn't have put those on there um, it doesn't make that much difference to have a little bit of a seam on the uh, wing joints there here's the rudder going in again do a nice dry fit on that to make sure that you can get the uh, the rudder in and a little bit of glue around the edge and you're good to go this is the uh, switch that is used for the rocket motor and the instructions are in, in the uh, package when you do uh, purchase that. And I will say that that's a lot simpler than the diagram looks. Uh, all you have to do is put that in line and I powered it from the balance lead off, off the battery. So very much simpler than, than what the instructions uh, say. There's a quick shot of the CG. Again, the, the wiring of the uh, rocket motor switch. Uh, provide a link down below. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you, you, you can install the release uh, mechanism for the gear, uh, and those instructions are also provided. So there you have it. That's the uh, Messerschmitt 163. Um, I really like this aircraft. It's a lot of fun. If you've got a little bit of the skill set and you feel comfortable uh, flying a wing of this configuration, I'd say go for it. Uh, well, look, that's the end of this video. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we appreciate the likes and subscribes. And as I always say, have a great day no matter what.